I have the coolest job in the world. I am a space archaeologist. I use satellite images to find ancient sites, which I then go out and survey on the ground. I've been working for the last 20 years mainly in Egypt, but also across the Mediterranean, North Africa, and even Europe. I want to tell you a little secret about we archaeologists. We are time machines. We can take you back in time. 100,000 years to the dawn of humanity, and across space to ancient Egypt, the Maya, and the Inca. But we can also take you to the future. We use data from our excavations to answer big questions about ancient human environment interactions, trade, and warfare. And we use that data to answer big questions about what's happening today and what may happen tomorrow. But here's the thing. We have barely scratched the surface in terms of what we know about the past. I think that there are millions of undiscovered archaeological sites around the world, and the only way that we're going to find them is by using satellites and as yet undeveloped technologies that you all will help invent. But you're not even going to have to be an archaeologist. The most incredible innovations in archaeology are happening today because of inventions in areas like DNA mapping, chemical testing, and 3D laser scanning. Now, the future of archaeology is science. These technologies weren't even around 20 years ago. In fact, in the 1990s, when I was in high school, the highest resolution satellites had a resolution of 45 meters per pixel. This means that from space, when you zoom in, you couldn't see things smaller than large buildings. But today, things have changed, and I just want to show you an image of the Sphinx at Giza in the mid-1990s. You really can't see anything. Today, satellites have a resolution of 10 inches per pixel. This means that you can zoom in from 400 miles in space and see things as small as your laptop. And look at the Sphinx now. It's just extraordinary. So I want to take you today to the ancient site of Portus, just outside Rome,、um, outside Rome's Fiumicino Airport. This was Rome's major center for trade and commerce. All the goods would come here from across Rome's rich empire. Here it is.、Um, it, in a sense, it was Rome's Amazon.com. I collaborated with colleagues from Southampton University in the UK, who'd been working at Portus for over 30 years, but they had never before used satellite imagery. So here's an image of, of Portus's port. Now, the problem with Portus, where it's located, is that look at this landscape. It's incredibly complex. You know, you've got modern houses, urbanization, lots of fields. It's a really difficult place to work, completely unlike Egypt. So we got satellite data, began to process it, and for weeks and weeks in my lab, I found nothing. At one point, you know, I, I thought I'd found all these really cool new houses and warehouses, and showed them to the team at Southampton, and they said they knew about them already. I felt like a complete failure. But this is science. We pick ourselves up again and keep going, and we got new data from the site. And in the fields to the northeast. Of the main site of Portus, when we were processing the data, something really interesting showed up. This feature, about 40 meters across, with eight-meter-thick walls, gates to the east and west, clear roadways, and structures to the north. This is so clear, I thought it had to be modern. And when I showed it to the team at Southampton, they were just blown away. They said, "We think you found the missing amphitheater of Portus." Here's an example of one from North Africa. Amphitheaters were places of performance, places where plays, political debates, and battle reenactments took place. In other words, ideas were spreading. Circa 100 A.D. So here's another cool project that I've just gotten involved with, taking place at the world-famous archaeological site of Petra in Jordan. Petra was home to the Nabataeans, an incredible civilization that lived there 2,000 years ago. Um, and it's amazing that they were able to have their civilization in this desert that gets less than six inches of water per year.、Uh, the Nabataeans were geniuses at water, man water management, collecting millions of gallons of water per year in cisterns that allowed them to have incredible trade, amass great wealth, and build tombs like this seen in Indiana Jones. So my colleagues asked me to participate in a project looking at satellite imagery from this site. I said, "Impossible! Archaeologists have been working at Petra for 200 years. How is it that I'm ever going to be able to find something new?" 
But when processing the data using complex algorithms, this really interesting feature showed up, about 320 meters by 120 meters in size. I collaborated with my colleague, Dr. Chris Tuttle, and a team of Jordanians. They went out on the ground to check it out, and they found a massive monumental platform. They then brought in a drone and found this, this amazing platform with internal walls, uh, clear rooms and other structures. This could be the site of an ancient temple. And what's incredible is that this structure is only located a kilometer south of the main city, and previous archaeologists had missed it. Zoom in a little bit closer, you can see just how clear this is. We're going to excavate this feature in the future, but it goes to show us just how much there is left to find at well-known sites, and how ancient cultures like the Nabataeans thrived in incredibly difficult environments, and also how resilient and creative human beings can be in the face of extreme environmental challenges. Every week in my lab, my team and I are challenged by trying to find new archaeological sites in places all over the world where I don't think we're going to find anything. And guess what? I'm nearly always wrong. Everywhere we look, we find new settlements, new temples, and even potential pyramids, showing us that we need to reassess and reanalyze almost every archaeological site in the world. But here is the most exciting thing of all. With all of the new advances in satellite technologies and all of the new technologies that you all will help to invent by 2035, what will you all find that we've missed? Thank you very much.